With most of the bosses in old school, teaming up makes things a lot easier. But the game offers a range of bosses that can only be done solo. In this video, I'll cover six of the most profitable solo only bosses and I'll show you how to do them. With 95 Slayer, you unlock one of the most profitable solo bosses in the game, the Alchemical Hydra. The boss overall has lucrative drops with a lot of seeds and herbs and alkaballs, but there's three drops that really boost your GP per hour. You have a slim chance of getting the Hydra's Claw, worth over 60 mil right now. With a better drop rate, you can get Hydra Leather, and more commonly, you get pieces of the Brimstone Ring. Overall, you can earn 4.5 mil per per hour here with max stats and gear. And with inferior gear and lower stats, you'll still be getting at least 3 mil an hour. Unfortunately though, Hydra can only be killed on a Slayer task. The boss can be killed with both ranged and melee, although range is recommended. Crystal Armor and Armadil are the best to use, and having prayer bonus significantly prolongs your trips. The Twisted Bow or the Dragon Hunter Crossbow are the best to use, and the Blowpipe works well, although the Bofa is a little better. For melee, the Dragon Hunter Lance or the Garazi Rapier is best since it's weak to stab. The fight against Hydra involves dragging it onto particular coloured vents in order to deal full damage. When Hydra is green, it needs to be over the red vent. When blue, it needs to be green, and red needs to be over blue. Every time you successfully lure Hydra over a vent, it lets out a roar that you can see. Hydra's last phase, where it turns black, doesn't require you to take it to any vents, but instead it alternates its attack styles between ranged and mage. At the beginning of the battle, Hydra attacks with a random attack style, either range or mage, and after three attacks, Hydra switches to the opposite attack style and continues that cycle. It's a good idea to bring along Crystal Dust, because Hydra drops a lot of range potions, so you can turn them into divine potions as you go. It's also a good idea to bring a Bone Crusher to get passive prayer XP rather than wasting the Hydra Bones. The next boss on the list is one that we're all very familiar with, and that is Raid Shadow Legends, today's video sponsor. Raid has really set the bar high when it comes to mobile gaming, bringing console-like graphics and gameplay. Recently, a new legendary champion was added that I've found to be super powerful. Deliana is one of the best support champions in the entire game, able to carry your team past many of Raid's hardest challenges. She has very powerful abilities that work at all stages of the game. It doesn't matter if you're brand new or a veteran. Raid currently has a special Deliana event where you can get the new legendary champion for free just by logging in and playing Raid for seven days. Once you're in game, you can enter the promo code MYDELIANA to get a ton of silver and 50 XP brews to boost your Deliana by 50 levels. There's also special events happening every single day, with a new event for the Summer Solstice where you can choose rewards suited to your playstyle. On top of that, there's more awesome champions coming out, and a set of skins for Trunda Guilt Mallet. So what are you waiting for? Get started in Raid today. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to get free items worth $30, which you can then find in your inbox in-game. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video. Another highly profitable solo boss is completing the Gauntlet. While the regular Gauntlet does give decent drops, it's the Corrupted Gauntlet that is the real moneymaker. You have a 1 in 400 chance of getting the Enhanced Crystal Weapon Seed, worth around 150 mil right now. You can also get the Crystal Armor Seed, or the Crystal Weapon Seed, alongside a range of resource drops. To partake in the Gauntlet, you need to have completed Song of the Elves, and for the Corrupted one, it's recommended to have at least 90 in the combat stats, plus Rigor and Augury. Once you enter, the aim is to prepare yourself to fight Hunlef, with limited time. So in Corrupted, I usually aim to get full tier 1 armor, 2 tier 3 weapons, as well as around 20 cooked food and 2 potions. So you'll explore the dungeon you're given, gathering resources from skilling or killing monsters, and you'll also face some demi-bosses. With a full inventory, you return back to the starting room to create armor and weapons at the singing bowl. Then you continue to prepare until you're ready to fight Hunlef. Hunlef can be a challenge to learn, particularly the corrupted version. 
but after enough tries and with the help of some Runelight plugins, you'll eventually get it down. The mechanics are the same for the regular and corrupted Hunlef, so it can be good practice on the regular Gauntlet before fighting the harder Hunlef. The boss has a range of attacks and moves, with prayer disabling attacks and more. With high stats, you can average 6 corrupted gauntlets per hour, and using the drop probabilities, you get an average of 800k in loot per gauntlet, sending you to up to 5 mil per hour. Vorkarth is another solo-only boss that deserves a place in this video. After Dragon Slayer 2, and with a decent range level, Vorkarth can net you up to 4 mil an hour with melee, and slightly less with range depending on your weapon. Alongside a broad range of consistent valuable drops, Vorkarth has a few very valuable drops. The Skeletal Visage is worth over 20 mil right now, and the Draconic Visage is 3.7. The Dragon Hunter Lance is the best weapon to use here, although a Dragon Hunter Crossbow can be the better option depending on your gear. A Blowpipe does also work well. Being being an undead dragon, the salve amulet helps a lot, and the void armor set is great for ranged. There's three main attacks that you need to look out for. Randomly, Vorkarth will launch one ball of dragon fire in the air, and you need to move at least two tiles away to dodge it. Another is the icy dragon fire attack, which freezes you in place and a zombified spawn appears. You should use the Crumble Undead spell to attack the spawn as fast as possible, because if it reaches you, it deals up to 60 damage. There's also an Acid Pool attack, where Vorkarth launches acid all over the arena, and then lobs balls of dragon fire at you. You need to walk, avoiding the dragon fire and acid to stay alive. Once you understand those three attacks, Vorkarth is a pretty easy boss, giving huge hourly profits. At level 91 Slayer, you can defeat Cerberus on a Slayer task only. At a 1 in 512 chance, you can get Crystals, and the Primordial Crystal is currently over 27 mil, and the other two Crystals are both under 2 mil. You can also get the Smoldering Stone, which is worth 4.6. The regular drops from Cerberus are pretty trash so you won't really make much here unless you get lucky. But using the average drop rates and the prices, you can expect 2.7 mil per hour here with max gear and stats, and more around 2 mil an hour with inferior gear. Cerberus can be a tricky boss to learn at first, but once you've learnt it, you can do pretty long trips. There's two mechanics to look out for. At the start of the fight, and every 30 seconds, Cerberus uses an attack with all three attack styles, the first being Mage, Range, then Melee. And you can avoid damage from this just by praying accordingly. When Cerberus is below 400 hit points, three souls make their way from the river. They attack you in order from left to right, and they all have different attack styles. So you need to pray on each tick to avoid damage. The souls also drain your prayer, and wearing a spectral spirit shield halves the prayer drain. Lastly, when Cerberus is below 200 hit points, she lets out a growl and throws three lava pools, one which lands under you. You need to be two tiles away to avoid damage, and after a few seconds, the pools dissipate. The Inquisitor's Mace and the Scythe on Crush are the best weapons to use against Cerberus. You can also use the Arc Light as Cerberus counts as a demon, or the Garazi Rapier or Abyssal Bludgeon also work well. To stay there almost infinitely, you should bring a Blood Fury, or otherwise you can do the suicide method to drop a lot of food on the ground for yourself. Zolra is a boss that used to be extremely profitable, but after some drop table rebalances by Jagex, it's not really as good. At high levels with a Tebow and max efficiency, you can make at least 3.5 mil per hour here, but sometimes up to 5 mil an hour if you're good with your switches. But with lower level stats and regular gear, 1.5 to 2 mil an hour is what you'll probably get. Zora has four main valuable drops, with a 1 in 128 chance to get any of them. To get a specific item, it's 1 in 512. When you're learning how to kill Zora, you'll definitely need a diagram of where to stand for each phase. There's regular picture versions or also Runelight plugins that can show you the diagram. Overall, Zora is only really good for players with a Tebow and high stats. It's also great for Iron Men, but at lower levels, you're better off going to Vorkarth if you've unlocked it. The final solo-only boss I want to show you is actually a demi-boss, and that is the Demonic Gorillas. 
these guys on a regular account are more profitable than Zora, where with max stats you can expect to get almost 4 mil per hour here. With lower stats and inferior gear, you can expect around 2 to 3 mil per hour, but demonics are very luck based, dependent on whether you get a Xenite shard. They're dropped at a rate of 1 in 300 and go for almost 15 mil at the moment. The other drops from Demonics aren't too bad, but almost all of your GP per hour will come from Xenite Shards. Learning the prayer switches for Demonics can take a bit of time, but overall they are easy to kill. Anyways guys, that's 6 solo only bosses that give huge amounts of profit. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like to let me know. And if you're new around here, subscribe to my channel for more old school RuneScape videos. Thanks for watching and good luck bossing.